<laughs> um, do you know, can you have everybody come from the back to the front line? There are two people back there in the back. I think something wrong with them. Get that Mexican on the last row. <laughs> I think he doesn't have papers. He won't come? Habla English? That's about. Habla English? No. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, we're ready. Go. Are they waiting for me or I'm going to wait for them, Dan? We're streaming and we're going to start in about 15, 20 seconds. All right. So. Did you guys hear a lady? Somebody got your job, you got fired. Uh, uh, Daniel took your job. Do you know about that? Ooh. You got fired, now Daniel took your job. Right. Good morning, welcome to church. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Thank you so much for being with me. You can get involved by going on the chat line and questions or comments and I will get to them. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hi, y'all. Yeah, I was just saying my godson got fired because he wouldn't do his job. So we hired a Mexican because the black won't do it. Did you notice that, Gemma? No. Yeah. Anyway, welcome, y'all. How is everybody? So uh, I wrote down some stuff I want to bring up. Um, number one is, did you hear that there is a, a black, I mean, a a white homosexual running for president? Did y'all hear about that? Yeah, a white homosexual from Indiana. Isn't that gross? Or who don't think it is gross? And he got a husband. I never thought that I would live in America where sin would be permitted as okay because we should be ashamed of sin. And then somebody would run for president who's an out homosexual and say he has a husband. Isn't that like crazy? What is wrong with America? That is mind blowing. What? James trying to get my attention there, Mark. And, and he calls himself a Christian. Right. He's attacking Mike Pence for disagreeing with it. He says, you have a problem with my creator. But Mike Pence disagreed with homosexuality. He didn't even disagree with the guy. Right. He didn't say, oh no, not a radical homosexual. And now he's becoming the darling of the Democratic Party. And they don't even like white straight men. Did you know about that, Brenda? I knew he was right. You did? Your first impression was what? My first impression was that I wanted to read more about him and see what he stood for. Well, once I found out he was a homosexual, I didn't need to know it anymore. He's such an outlier. It's not like he's one that was trying to overcome it. Uh, and now they're calling him, they're comparing him to Barack Obama. They're comparing him to uh, Beta O'Rourke, O'Rourke, whatever. Isn't it? They're, not, they're like making him the darling of the Democratic Party. What do you think about that? I really don't like to talk about politics. Oh, you don't? No. Why not? Because I, I find that it's very easy to grab onto one piece of information and, and start running with that when you really don't know all the other things about somebody. And it, it takes a lot of time to try to figure out uh, what people stand for and I just come off as very uninformed, and I'd oh. rather spend my time on other things than that because I just feel like it, it'll sort of come out in the wash. I don't really care who the darling of the Democratic Party is right now. It's two years ahead of time, and so... It'll be here before you know it. 
Well, that's true, but, yeah. but so let them work it out because aware. my opinion is not going to make one damn bit of a difference. To it what does, though. It sure. Not to the it, Democratic because Party. We, yeah, because the Democrats hate those who <clears throat> don't support them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's good. But become aware. It's going to be a mess. Yes, Mark? Uh, I was wondering what, I understand that this particular person is like, you know, I'm Christian, I'm religious, and I'm gay, and you hate me. He's, you know, a radical homosexual, as you would say. Right. I understand that. But I don't, th I don't think I would care if somebody was homosexual, if they wanted to, like, build a wall, you know what I mean, uh, make the government smaller, you know, uh, be about free markets, do if they had good policies, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't care any less. Like I think politicians. So if they were um, radical, but they would build a wall, and do all the good things, you right? Would, so you would vote for them for sure. Amazing. Because I think all politicians are. Like I think I happen to like Trump. You know, I just personal like his personality. Right. And like what you say and James say, I believe that. Right. I don't think you're making it up and stuff. I just personally like him, and I like his policies. And speaking of the great white hope, did you hear the good news? What's that? You're going to love this. The president may ship all the illegal aliens to the sanctuary cities. Oh, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, like, let's Isn't say. Isn't that like brilliant? Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be mainly California. So, right. So, get ready, California. <laughs> He goes ship them all to, uh, to the, so California would be one of the cities that would get them. But just in general, don't you disagree with the idea of thinking that people, because they're famous or have a platform, that they're somehow moral? You know I what totally I mean? Disagree, yeah. Like a politician, like MLK had all kinds of mistresses, and he's Mr. Yeah. Morality to the whole country. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it, so it's like the idea to look up to the morality of a politician is just like hilarious to me. That's it's why like, they're supposed to keep it secret, but do the right thing. Yeah. And then hopefully they can overcome it. But now that it's out in the open now. So what do you think about me saying, like, I, I don't care if the guy's what he is, including homosexual, you if it's a politician. Him. Yes, because all politicians, to me, like... I the, would never vote for a man or a woman who says, I'm a slut, but vote for me. Right. I understand that. But that's, that makes sense if you have a moral person on the other side to vote for. But what if you have a homosexual who has all these conservative values that he's proposing, and then you have a Democrat on the other side? I still wouldn't take that risk, because at some point they're going to pass laws that goes against what is right. Because you can't ride two horses. Uh -huh. And so I wouldn't want to know what they're into, because that indicates that they are embarrassed by it. That means that they know it's wrong. But if they promote what they're into and it's wrong, I would never trust that. Doesn't that imply, though, that God kind of keeps score and that homosexuality is somehow worse than other immoral, uh, immoral things? Right. That's me. That's me. I wouldn't want to be both for someone who's proud of it. Everybody got some type of trauma they should overcome, but we should be embarrassed by it. So even if, let's say, he's a radical homosexual, right? And he's all hood. about it. Like he said his rhetoric is, is a 0%. It's an F, right? But his policies are an A. And on the other side, you have a Democrat. I wouldn't vote for either one. Okay. Me, personally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank I would just wouldn't vote that year. Cool. I'll sit it out. Uh, let me do this because I'm tired. Um, so last week, oh, another thing I wanted to tell you about. Uh, uh, so I'm watching this movie yesterday, and it was about that black boy that was shot up in Oakland. Uh, he was on a bot train or something, and they got off, and something happened with the, the president, I mean the uh, police officer and the guy. Did you all hear about that? Yeah. You heard about it? What did you hear about? Because you may remember the story better than I do. <laughs> His name was Oscar Grant, and he was riding the BART train. I want to say it was New Year's or some kind of event. Right. Yeah. Came back. <clears throat> they stopped him because they thought they were involved in a fight. And while he, he was handcuffed on the floor. Well, they really were involved in a fight on the train. But then the, uh, the train operator called the police. And so before the police could get there, they were all trying to get off the train to get away. And so 
they were getting away, but the cops caught them anyway. Mm -hmm. And they were yelling at the cops, saying, why do you want to put handcuffs on me? Why do you want to stop me? They were going off on the cops. And so the cops were being tough on them as well. Yeah, it looked like it was pretty intense because yeah. the cops were kind of, you know, really hyper-focused and surrounded by a lot. Of, it was a lot of kids. I'm yeah, a lot, of, a lot of stuff going on. And one of the cops ended up killing... Uh, Oscar Grant. Yeah, yeah, he was 22, right? He's pretty young. Did you see it? Did you see the movie on that, or you just heard about it on the Only news? Only recently, yeah. You saw the movie? Yeah. What would you think about it? They make they don't uh, deal with the uh, the bad actions. They make him seem like completely innocent. I felt. Who like. did? It was so emotional. It makes you want to go along with the criminal uh, and not realize that he was wrong. It's it's awful that they do that. But there was so much wrong with that situation anyway. Number one, the boy didn't have a daddy. He was raised by a mother. And the mother was like really mother, motherly with him, right? Number two, he had a, a Mexican woman that he was dating. It looked like a Mexican. And they had a baby out of wetlock. They didn't show anything wrong with that. Um, number three, the boy had been in prison before. And, uh, and then when he got out, he got a job, but because he was late, and lazy, he lost the job. But they made all the wrong thing right. Like, it really wasn't a big deal. And all that adds up to him being dead, but they leave that part out. Mm -hmm. And then the mama, stupid mama, she was like, oh, my baby, <laughs> my poor baby. I'm like, he's not a baby. He's a 22-year-old man. But she treated him like he was a baby. And I've never seen anything like that before. When I was growing up, they never did call us baby. But it's so typical now. But then, and I, another thing that I noticed is that whenever it's a white on black cop issue, everybody in the neighborhood would show up for a rally. But if it's an abortion issue or black on black crime issue or something like that, nobody shows up. They show up for the wrong things. And it was bad. So you started moving, huh? Right on. Amazing. Okay, so here's, and then I'll come to you. Just let me get this out real fast. My biblical question for this week is, do you have your own truth? How many people have their own truth? Oh, y'all scared to say now. Who don't have their own truth? Amazing. Why don't you have your own truth? In the gray shirt. Because the truth is the truth. There's only one truth, one reality that exists. Y'all uh, heard the show. So I move on from that one. <laughs> so the truth is only from God. Ain't no such thing. There is no such thing as human beings having their own truth. But that's a big saying now. What's your truth? My truth, your truth. I even heard a, a guy, a black guy said at the, at the gym the other day, well, a couple weeks now, we were talking. He was like, what about my truth? I'm like, oh, I'll see you later, buddy. <laughs> I gotta go back and work out. <laughs> no such thing. By the way, I'm growing a beard. Can you tell? I'm giving it a try and see what happens. I may hate it and, turn it and cut it off next week. But I'm seeing what happened. I hope so. <laughs> Um, okay, you had a question? Well, yeah, I was just going to comment on Okay. <laughs> a point in the same kind of thing is I just heard yesterday about some little, do you hear about the five-year-old white kid that got pushed off the third story in the mall, the American mall? I think I heard about it, but I didn't pay a lot of attention. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't read too much into it, but the headline said that it was, a, it was because he was a white kid and this black guy pushed him off. Amazing. And he's in critical condition, but but you said, like you said, nobody covers that. Right. And so you, you barely really hear, hear about, about it that at all. So I just want to see. You're the news guy. It's but. unfortunate. <laughs> it's unfortunate. Okay. Uh, Victoria, how you doing? Me, this one. Uh, that one. There's two of us. <laughs> there are two of you. Yeah. Oh. Your name Victoria too? Oh wow. It's a Victoria the black one. <laughs> How you doing? Good. 
How's it going? It's going well. And what's making it go well? I still get lost in my thoughts, but I'm catching myself getting lost in yeah. them. And realizing that a lot of my thoughts are literally just... <laughs> there are these crazy made-up stories in my head. They're all crazy. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's going well. There's not too many... Um, details to give other than oh, okay. I mean that's just it, that's what it is I'm starting to feel a lot different so yeah. you know before maybe I would be resistant to it but I mean are you doing the silent prayer I did it a couple times this week so I'm but not guessing every day? that's a no because not I every have, day no not every day suffer and die <laughs> that is the darndest thing I ever heard of I wonder why who don't do the silent prayer every morning and night at least Wow, Brenda, <laughs> Grandma, <laughs> I got to ask Brenda first, and I want to, why don't you do the silent prayer every morning and night? Because God said, pray without ceasing. That means you got to always be in prayer. Why don't you do it every morning and night? The honest answer is because I'm trying to, um, I sense the devil grabs my brain right when I wake up. And, and you're like, okay, daddy, you can have it. Well, some days, yes, because, because I think about it and it's like some, some days it is, it happens and then I see it happen or I feel it happen rather. And I'm not really sure what to do with that. It's like, okay, well, let me just sit in it because he can't be here all day. So, and, and that, I guess that's my question for you. Am I supposed to pray him away? Because if he's there and I see him, what else is there to do? You that's know, I recognize, amazing. no, but what I'm saying is that I recognize he's there where before I thought that it was just, oh, this is natural. This is fine. You know, yeah, these are my thoughts and da 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 da. But no, it's like, I, I get it. You're working on me today. Okay, but it's this isn't going to last forever. So my question to you is what, how should I be seeing this? I'll come back in a minute. I want to hear the other excuses for not doing it. It's not an, well, okay, maybe it is. All right, I'll give you that. It's All an right. excuse. Brenda, why don't you do the silent prayer every day, morning and night? Because I've never learned how to do it. You never learned how to do it? Right. Well, why have you asked someone to tell you how? I did and I got the tape and the tape is very long and slow and I I asked for a written version of it but I never got that but if you did and you ask your husband to show you how um, <coughs> he told me to use the tape yeah that's what your husband told you well he does it his way and on his own but it's like I really wanted to just see what it was I was supposed to do and read it and be able to sort of understand the whole overview of it and I just wasn't able to do that and so Amazing. I got into it but it was so slow that I gave up. All right. Uh, why don't you do it every day right here. Here come Daniel. I think uh, Victoria has such a like an elaborate way of kind of explaining, explaining, you know, her excuse. <laughs> no offense. Yeah. I actually, I don't even <laughs> think about it, to be honest. Um, you don't think about it. I don't think about it. I Suffer and die. Well, I, I, I mean, I have been, but I'm trying to, like, kind of alleviate that. Like, I signed up for the gym yesterday. I, I'm going back to school now. Um, so I'm doing, like, little things to help me along. But then when I do stumble, I realize that I need to catch myself, um, but overall, it's just not something I really think about. But I, although I am starting to give um, praise more and more, like just, you know, praise whether to, to some, uh, the to owner like of God, the gym. like to God, right? Like oh. if, if the weather's nice or like if my car starts, I'm like, God bless, right? And that, that's something oh. I never really did before. Um, like God care about that, right? <laughs> well, I mean, considering I was like, in a very different spot, you know, like less than two years ago. But um, I just wanted to add one thing totally separate from this. But um, I am such a Tarl Warwick fan, AKA Styx Hexenhammer 666. I was thinking about him like all last week. And then when I saw him on your show, I'm just like, I will slip Jesse a 50. I mean, donate a 50 to your organization 
just to like, next time you speak to him, let him know he has a big fan in LA. All Although right. that's really not helping my situation because well, then I'm just. Well, me to 50, I tell him. <laughs> Please. Uh, so you're a big fan, huh? That's, I actually found you through watching him. Wow. Yeah, I, I think I'm like one of the few people that's become a fan in the like last two years that hasn't become a fan through like watching the rec videos. So what do you like about him? I like his, um, I, I like his thought process. I like the topics that he brings up. Um, maybe I just have a thing for horse face guys, but I think he's also very, <laughs> I think he's good looking. And when I saw, the moment I saw one of his videos that kind of like gave me the green light, like it's okay to look like a deviant while actually having like, um, you know, like deviated thoughts like from, you know, like the norm. Right. Because I was actually gonna get like a, Two years ago, I was actually going to get like a satanic tattoo um, on the inner side of my my arm. Well, no wonder you're not oh. doing a prayer. <laughs> well, that was that was two years ago. Yeah, I know. But, I'm yeah. Amazing. Did you have a fun time on your trip? To where? Didn't you Didn't you go to Australia? Oh, uh, next weekend. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, next time I have him on, I'm gonna let you know in advance so you can come over and meet him on the show. I mean, I would like donate a pint of blood. Okay. Two, yeah, two I can if use I can spare it. Like. <laughs> so I, remember that, uh, Daniel. Next time we have Martin, I want to come into the studio and meet him. Oh, All right. It'd be a dream. Okay. Who else? Are, are, you're not doing the prayer every morning and night. Right here, right here, the young lady in the white, and then the young man next to her, right next to you. Why are you doing it every morning and night? Because I honestly don't think about it until I come to church and then you bring it up, and I'm like, sure. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay, I appreciate your honesty. I need to set like a reminder or something, otherwise I'm not going to remind You're not going to do that? I'll try to set a reminder tonight. I'm sorry? I'll try to set a reminder tonight. Amazing. Maybe. Do you remember to get on your cell phone all the time? Yep. Yeah. Scroll through Let me ask the young lady in the white. You don't do the silent prayer every morning and night, right? Well, I try to. I feel like I do, but maybe I don't fully. Um, do you do the silent prayer every morning and night? I feel like I'm always in prayer, but do you maybe do the silent prayer every morning and night? Well, I'm a little confused as to what the silent prayer is. Do you do the silent prayer every morning and night? I think I do, but maybe I'm doing it wrong. Do you do the silent? <laughs> <laughs> do you do the silent prayer every morning and night? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Why do we have to go up and down the road before we get the answer? <laughs> no wonder God said, let your answer be yes or no. Amazing. All right, we'll come back. To, and you don't do it right next to you? No, sir. And, and why not? I want to suffer. You want to suffer and die? Eventually die after I suffer. That's right. Amazing. Anybody else that's not doing it? Well, I actually had a testimony. Hold on right here. Hold on for a second. Yes, sir. Is this your first time here? It is. What's your name? My name's Ron. I was the one that called or told Ryan to give you a call. He's the one with the stage four cancer this week. He spoke with him. Oh, okay. Him well. that was right on. Yeah. Um, but so anyways, I was going through my spiritual journey. I had a lot of stuff going on. I went through divorce and stuff. And, you know, when you're always being called the devil and stuff, I was like, well, if everybody's calling me the devil. I might as well be the biggest devil I possibly can be. And so, um, who call you the devil? Oh, just, you know, ex-wife or, you know what I mean, other people. Do you have kids? I do. Oh, okay. But uh, one thing that's really cool about that is I, uh, did I turn it on? Uh, that's cool. So anyways, but one thing I did, um, and it just was in me to do was not to get involved with women with my children and me you know splitting the time with them i'm spending yeah. time just with them they're not seeing me split time or send them to grandma's house while i'm gone and doing me but getting back to uh, my spiritual journey you know i was listening to um the quran and listening to like all the religious books and stuff the mormons would come over and i would speak with them and so dabbled into the anton LaVey's uh satanic bible and so um you know, when you listen to like certain things through YouTube, like their seances and stuff, even though you're not expecting something to come inside of you, it definitely does. Yeah. I welcomed it into my body. And I mean, I would lash out at my parents because I felt like they turned their backs on me and I was just a walking demon. I mean, I could just cut you down to size with just my, my, my verbal, you know, um, I've actually heard you talk to some satanic guys and they go, they go crazy, you know, and that's what I felt inside of me. But getting to your... Um, so you became that way because... 
uh, other people were saying that about you, that you're the devil? Well, and I was, I was opening myself up to accepting that kind of lifestyle. That's you know amazing. What I mean? And so, um, but getting back to your silent prayer. Meet your sister. I, I was listening yeah. while I was listening to that. <laughs> I actually had a hat with a pentagram on it and stuff. It's just those little things that you don't think is, uh, yeah, but it's those little things like that, that kind of open everything. And, you know, you think you have control over your body, but I fell asleep listening to uh, the silent prayer because it is a little long. You're so soothing when you're doing it. You know what I mean? I actually fell asleep, but it was playing on my phone. And I woke up the next morning and go, I feel like substantially different. You know what I mean? Even though I wasn't really coherent listening for word for right. word. But yeah. I say, there's something different here. You know what I mean? I felt like whatever was suppressing me, the anger and everything was gone. I felt happy. And it was actually that weekend I called my parents and uh, broke down and just apologized uh, for the way I treated them, you know, lashed out at them and forgave them. And they were just so happy to hear it and accepting of that. So, you know, with that, I, I, I think the silent prayer is amazing. Yeah. And got my buddy who's non-religious into listening to the silent prayer, Ryan, who's going to be probably checking out here pretty soon, but uh, got him to kind of go through it. So, you know, right for on, that, man. yeah. That's great. Nice testimony. The one thing I, <clears throat> the one thing I want to tell you is that no human being can save your soul. No human being, no physical thing, a uh, place or person can bring you out of that fallen state because it's a spiritual thing and only God can bring you out and he can only do it if you are sorry for being there if you really realize that it's wrong for being in that state so you can hear me speak all the time but if you don't see that you're wrong and then submit to the prayer you have no chance you don't have a chance because it's a spiritual thing and not a physical one. And I know that a lot of you are lazy about prayer, but I highly recommend you do it. I've been doing it for 30 years now and nonstop, no matter where, I, how late I go to bed or if I'm traveling or whatever, I make sure I do it before I go to sleep and the first thing in the morning. And sometimes if I go to bed like two or three in the morning, I still make sure I do it because I know that that's what has kept my mind with his mind. The prayer itself, the sign of the prayer is not going to change you, but what it does connect you with God, and he makes the change. You take over your life. He renew your mind. And if you don't submit to the prayer, you're not going to get better. And I notice that a lot of people, they start out doing it, and they feel good, then they stop. And then they start falling back, then they start getting, you know, back into their imagination. They, oh... I'm never going to make it. It's not working for me. It's not working because you're not serious about it. God said to pray without ceasing. And so as you do it, there's going to come a point that even during the day when you're doing your work or when you're faced with challenges, you're going to become aware. And the awareness is of the light of God in you. And that's what helps you to overcome all things because you can see what's going on. Otherwise, you don't really see what's going on. And you're going to be in the darkness trying to find your way. And so Satan, the last thing Satan wants you to do is to be still and know God. He would rather for you to say, oh, praise you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Or oh, loud prayer. He wants you to do that rather than be still and know. He doesn't want you to do that. And so he's going to always talk you out of it if he can. He does, that's the last thing he wants you to do to overcome your imagination to bring every thought into captivity. So it's up to you. But I, I used to wonder, why don't people stay with it? I realize now you're not doing the prayer. And if you don't do the prayer, you're not able to stay with it. That makes sense? So do what you want, of course, but I highly recommend you stay with the prayer no matter what. And the ego doesn't like the fact that it doesn't have anything to do. That's why it's hard for a lot of you to sit still and do it because the ego want to be busy. The nature of God want to have something to do, something to say, some kind of way to act so you can feel good about yourself. But the ego must die in order for you to live. And only God can kill the ego because it's a spirit and he'll take it away from you if you're sincere. I don't know what else to tell you about that because it's really up to you. If you are not if you're okay with suffering, I don't mind. 
We have some t-shirts back there that says suffer and die. <laughs> so make sure you pick up one. <laughs> yes, sir. Where you been, Michael? Uh, Korea and the Philippines. Oh, really? Yeah. All right. Welcome back. But um, I was curious. Somebody mentioned it earlier about, or you mentioned it about keep the silent prayers there to help you keep that connection to God. Is there something that you found that keeps that connection throughout the day without kind of having to do, well, or being in silent prayer all day? Yes. What happens is once you are drawn back into the kingdom of heaven, he renews your mind. And so those old way of thinking and the old way of seeing things start to disappear. Mm -hmm. And now you see things in the right way yeah. as they are instead of illusion of what they are. That's why he wants you to stay in prayer, meaning stay aware. And you can't force yourself to be aware. You cannot force yourself to be aware. You can pretend you're aware, but you're really not. And only he can cause you to be aware. And so during the day, your mind is being renewed and you start, you stop overreacting. You find yourself more honest. You don't hold anything against people. You can see how to do your work. Mm. Uh, and everything starts to change because he renews your mind. But being in that state of mind is still <coughs> different from doing the silent prayer in the morning and at night. Well, it's the silent prayer that helps you get to that. Because really, when you're aware by him, he, you're really in silent prayer, in prayer with God. You're not hooping and hollering, but you have a relationship with him. Mm -hmm. You can see what's going on. I see. Are you doing it every night and day, Michael? Uh, no. You know, no uh, I'm not. But it's, Suffer and die. Yeah, but as somebody That's said, it's, amazing. it's um, that awareness throughout the day where it's just It's ice. a fake awareness. Is it? Yeah. Hmm. Because you can learn to be aware. Be aware, right? And so all of a sudden you be aware. You're aware that it's raining outside. You're aware that you're at work. You're aware that someone is mad at you, but you're still not aware. That's the trick of Satan. See, Satan pretend to be God, too. So whatever God is teaching, when Satan hear about it, he starts teaching it, too. He really does. That's why you hear a lot of people that quote the preacher, quote me, quote the scripture, because Satan is making them think that they really see what they really don't see, because they're still paying attention to his thoughts, and they think that is their own. He would give you a false awareness. Isn't that amazing? No. Yeah. Because some people say, oh, I don't have to meditate. I'm aware. No, you're not. It's Satan making you aware. You could have to go to the toilet and say, get involved. Have you ever done that? Bring your cell phone. You're like, oh, I forgot my phone. <laughs> he get involved in everything. That's why God wants you to be aware so he can bring that into captivity. And then after a while, he get further, further, further away from you. But a lot of people think they're aware and they're not. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. That's a really good question, Mike. Um, I had a comment about gay people, but um, about the prayer. I've been wondering, well, I have had this want for the longest time to, like, take a hike. And take one now. <laughs> <laughs> no. <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> and because I, as soon as I read in the Bible how, like, Christ would go up a hill with his students and then they would pray, I, for, I always wanted to do it, but always something <laughs> comes up and I don't do it. And I notice when I'm praying, um, there's a lot of noise, like cars and neighbors talking. I can hear everything, especially the deeper you go. It's like you hear everything, and it's somewhat distracting. Is it important to like go on like a hike like that to just be away, just be with the Father? Uh, let me ask, are you doing a silent prayer morning and night? Yes. Every morning and night? There are once in a while where Luisa usually will take me away <laughs> from it, but yes. Every morning and night? No. Wow. Why do you just say no right away? 
Kosing lai dong say no. I thought it's important to mention that it's almost every night. <laughs> and see, I was saying to him, just say almost every night. Even though he's asking if you do it every night a day, say almost every night a day. He told you to do that. Because, okay. and the reason I want to make that clear, because we don't have our own thoughts. We are not in control of anything. We're either influenced by the spirit of the lie or the spirit of truth. And Satan told him to say almost every night, but that wasn't a question. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You call him daddy sometimes? No. But anyway, why don't you do it every night and day? Um, what happens is, you know, you wake up and then things will come up. And an hour later or two hours later, I'll, I'll remember, I'm like, I didn't do the prayer. And then I'll do it then. Amazing. But that's why. Wow, we're suffering and die. And as far as the noise while you're praying, if you're just still, it's fine to hear the noise because the noise is happening in the moment. But if you're in your head, you won't even hear the noise. So you want to be in the presence because everything that you hear is happening right then and there in the past. And after a while, you won't be agitated by it. It won't irritate you. It won't bother you. I understand, but my question was, why did Jesus go on, on these hikes? Or so do you think he Satan didn't? So that Satan can tell you, you need to go. Ah, come on. He went because he wanted time away from the people and had that quiet time with his father to know his will. And that's what's going to happen when you com sum submit to the prayer. You will start to know God's will instead of your own will. It'll just become natural. So that's why he had that quiet time alone. That's why it's so nice to be alone without music at times, without people around, the TV is turned off, so you can have that quiet time. All right, good question. Uh, is this your first time? First time. Amazing. What's your name? Yair. And how old are you? 33. Oh, you look like a teenager, man. I thought you were younger, <laughs> early 20s Thanks. or something. How did you hear about us? My brother here. Yeah. Oh, that's your brother? Yeah, oh, thank you for bringing it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions for me? I know I'm just uh, about the uh, silent prayers. Yeah. I, I just, from hearing everybody here, I haven't done it in years, uh, about 10 years. Yeah. Just because uh, I have forgotten about it, and then now I didn't know about it. So right. now, that, you know, hearing everybody's stories, I'm going to start doing it again. Yeah. I, I do it on my way to work every day. But you do it on the way to work while I, you're driving? While, my, while I'm driving, yeah. You close your eyes? <laughs> 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 yeah, so. It's no wonder so many people are suffering. Wow, you got to make up your mind, either you want to be free or you want to be a slave. You can't, 99 and a half won't do, you got to do 100. And life is so much better in the light than it is in the darkness. It's so different, it's so easy, it's so much better. It's so amazing. What's wrong with y'all? Just make sure you give a good donation so I would not have wasted my time. <laughs> All right? Yes, ma'am. Oh, hold on for the mic here. Wow. I guess suffering has to do it for some people. Yes. I do the medication. I don't want to suffer no more. I used to suffer. I used to go to church. I read the Bible. I lift up holy hands. I said, oh, thank you, Jesus. I gave money, I did all they said do, it did not work. And now that I'm away from that, why would I want to go back to that suffering like that? You could be free. Christ came so you could be free and have perfect peace. Really, it's not a game. You can have perfect peace right here on earth. Paradise is on earth. And hell is on earth as well. Yes, yes. I do the meditation day and night. And sometimes in the afternoon. Yeah. And I still got fooled. You got by what? Thoughts, oh, uh, okay. To act on something I shouldn't have acted on. Yes. And and when I acted on that thought, and I confronted the person, I noticed I started shaking. Yeah. And because uh, you were making a fool of yourself. You've been made a fool of. Uh, yes, I realized that after, yeah. but I didn't realize it then. Because our thoughts got me so involved in it that it was a, a relative, you know, my son, in other words, that, that I had to tell this person uh, not to be pushing things down his throat. But 
it wasn't time for me to right. do that. Yeah. And so I had to suffer for that. Do, you're not able to recognize God's voice as compared to Satan's voice I, now? I have. God, Satan's I, voice is in your head. Yeah. God is not going to talk to you in your head. Right. Do you understand that? If you don't understand anything else but that portion of it, he will not talk to you in your head. He will reveal things to you from the soul of your belly. And, not and, in your head. And I heard some tapes of you the other day, and that's uh, how I, I, I knew something was wrong, but I couldn't identify it. And then when I sat still, it all came to me, you know, just like a knowing yep. I was wrong. And even if I was wrong, I was right on what I said. Yeah. But it wasn't time wrong for me timing. to say that's it. Wrong timing, that's right. And Amazing. So, yeah. Uh, so don't make it a big deal. Yeah. Don't judge yourself for it. Just realize wrong time and whatever, right. and move on. And he wanted. But if you to, judge yourself, then yeah. he got you again. Because he wants to, because he was, he was saying to me to, um, well, why, why did you do that? Yeah. You know? And questioning, and and I seen it, and I I just let it go, and it went away. Good. But. Uh, well, I, just be aware and don't make it a big deal. You'll be fine. Okay. And stay with the prayer. Okay. Do I have to apologize? Go apologize? <coughs> I don't know. That's up to you. Because, I mean, what I said was true, but it wasn't the right time. Yeah, that's up to you. Yeah. you if you don't see to apologize, leave it alone. I don't feel like I have to. When you leave it alone and move on. All right. Yeah, just move on. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to um, let people know, like when they were saying that the silent prayer was long, but you have one on YouTube, and it's only about 15 minutes. You yeah, I wonder, maybe you listen to the old one, because what she was saying, I'm thinking, where's, which one is she listening and to? Yeah. I did one on YouTube where I did it here. That's the one, right? Yeah. Yes. And it's shorter. It's real short. It's like so go and check minutes, that one less out. Than, it's like 14-something minutes. Do you have 14 minutes to pray? SilentPrayer.video. All right. Okay. Thank you for reminding me of that. Yes, sir. Um, I've been wanting to say when I do the silent prayer, oftentimes I feel like a, a pain in my head. And originally when I was doing it, I thought maybe I was going cross-eyed because you say to, <laughs> to focus where the thoughts are. But don't focus, just be aware of that. Right. Don't so then, do anything, but just be aware. I started to relax and not do that as much and really like unclench my jaw and just yeah. relax into it. But it still happens where I have that pain in my head. Do you have a medical condition? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Yeah. If you should, if you do, you know, check the doctor just to make sure you don't have a medical condition. If you don't, don't worry about it. Okay. But just relax. The whole thing is to let go and let God. It's not for you to try to make anything happen. Things will happen naturally. So maybe you're tensing up or, and all that kind of stuff. Right. But if you don't have a medical problem, just relax. Let hmm. go. Or possibly. I mean, I never had this pain before because I used to smoke a lot of pot. You smoke pot? I, I used to, you, yes. you don't smoke anymore? No more. No. You want to try it? I got a joint on me. <laughs> <laughs> possibly if we make this pain go away. But... <laughs> No, I'm just going to keep going. A, why did, were you smoking for, because of headaches? Uh, I had a knee injury from playing sports, and I got addicted to painkillers. Oh. And when the prescription ended, I moved on to uh, pot, and I was doing that for years, for a decade, pretty much. Until, and how long ago? I mean, when did you stop smoking pot? Uh, it would be about six months now. Uh, so, maybe uh, it's like coffee. You know how sometimes if you stop drinking coffee for a long time, you start having headaches and things for a while. It might be due to that. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, and it's your path. But if it continues, to check with a doctor. All right. I was just asking in case anybody else ever experienced that. Maybe you heard of it. Yeah, I haven't. No. But uh, and, and speaking of pot, I saw in the news the other night that the solution to overcoming opioids is to smoke pot. <laughs> See how crazy the world is? <laughs> They're going to ditch you to pot from one addiction to another one. And y'all listen to them. I bet you if, if I were coming every Sunday morning and passing out joints, y'all smoke the pot, you have time to smoke. <laughs> but you don't have time to be still and know. 
That is amazing. But yeah, uh, just relax. Make sure you relax. Because you're not supposed to focus on anything. You're supposed to sit at the gate watching for the king to come in. That's all you do, just watch. It's like watching a movie or anything. You're not in control of the movie, so you're not in control of anything. So don't tense up. Don't try to hold on to thoughts. Don't try to let the good one go and hold on to, I mean, the bad ones go and hold on to the good one. Just relax and watch them all just go. It's right. real, real easy and simple. All right. Thank you, Jesse. All right. Um, yes, ma'am. Jesse, I have a question. Um, this weekend I was flying with, uh, I was working with two pilots and Did one- Did your husband yell at you from, uh, <laughs> from the, the uh, marriage couple thing? He didn't yell at me. He just uh, wanted to know why I brought it up. Oh, <laughs> I thought about you guys and I laughed. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, this weekend I was working with two pilots and one of them is a minister. He a called pilot as a minister? Yeah. Oh, God. And um, we went to dinner, and he, was, he knows I'm a born-again Christian. And he was telling me that um, he performed a wedding. And for a, pe a couple that wanted to renew their 50-year vows. And then he also said, oh, yeah, I've married all kinds of people. I've married a gay couple. and See, that's why you don't want him flying that plane. And... I didn't you should say, excuse me, should you, can you not fly me back home, please? <laughs> <laughs> well, the good thing is that we had already landed in California, oh, so that yeah. was the last night I was going to. Uh -huh. But um, my question to you is, the old me, the one that was very outspoken and I always had to say something, that's kind of been fading away, nice. and I don't do that anymore. Nice. And I, I didn't say anything. I just listened to him, and I knew that that wasn't right. Yeah. But I didn't try to like say, "Oh my God, how dare you?" Or "You're not a good Christian," or anything That's good. like that. Because there is a is time that... to speak and a time to be quiet. You ain't got to jump on everything every time you see someone doing wrong or you think they're wrong. And you don't have to say, "Oh, you hate your mama," <laughs> "You hate your daddy," "You're angry," "You're angry." No, you did right. Okay. Because when God wants you to say something, it will be so clear. It would be perfect timing. Mm -hmm. You will have no doubt about it, and it will work. Okay. Yeah, good. Wow, well, loud mouth is being quiet. <laughs> Ain't some guy even shut up the loud. Praise Jesus. Um, <laughs> that is real. So now I, I need to know this. How many of you are building your uh, house on solid ground? Uh-huh. Yeah, I see you peeping around there. Did you raise your hand, Joel? Yeah. How many of you are building a house on solid ground? Amazing. So, Ed, you raise your hand. Yeah. What is solid ground? <clears throat> For me, solid ground is not building it on my imagination. That's, That's a, very, it's a very big thing with me. Okay. It's very easy to make up what you think is solid ground. All right. So you're building your house on solid brown by not living your imagination. All right. That's that's number one. Number one. Yeah, for me. Is there a number two? <laughs> I suppose. Oh, okay. <laughs> if I, if I do right. number one, well, you don't need a number two. Oh, okay. Uh, let me see the hands who are building. Don't be afraid. All right. Put it back up. That's right. She's like afraid to put. Up. Joya, you're building your house on solid ground. What do you mean by that? Um. Just by seeing what's in front of me to do. And, and do. again, this is not a contest. This is a fellowship. That's all it is, all right? So no right or wrong answers. We are fellowshipping together. Yes? Just by seeing what's in front of me to do and doing the right thing. Okay. Give it to the young lady right in front of you. You're building your house on solid ground. You had your hand, right? Yeah. And what is solid ground for you? For me, it's putting God first. Is what? Putting God first and, and decisions I make. Playing God? No, no, putting God first. Oh, putting God first. Oh, I thought you said <laughs> playing God first. Okay, all right. Did you have your hand, sir? Yes, sir. And you're building your house on solid ground. Building, yes. And what is solid ground? I think it's you? humbling myself and coming here and listening to this. It's important. All right. Okay. Uh, the young man in the white hat inside the building. You're building your house on. Are you you're building your house on solid ground? Yes. And what is solid ground for you? 
um, it, it's being honest to myself about myself and, and what I am. Okay. Interesting. The young man, you had your hair, right? Yeah. You're building your house on solid ground, right? Yes. And what is solid ground? Uh, starting with the, the love of God. The love of God? Yeah. Okay. And searching for the kingdom within. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's how I'm rebuilding my foundation. Yeah. The one thing that God wants us to do is to build our house on solid ground. Because if you don't, any of the situation, it's called the wind will blow it away, right? But any challenge, any situation, Satan can whisper in your ear, ears, and your house would be down. It would be gone. And so he encouraged you to build it on solid ground. And um, I want to encourage you to do that. And what solid ground is, is love. You got to love. God is love. And he wants you to build it on love. Because you can pray till the cows come home. You can read the Bible until you're black and blue in the face. You can live on top of the hill. You can have all the richest friends and money and be all sophisticated. But if you don't have, if you don't have love, you have nothing. You really have nothing. And the world is set up so that you don't have love. They offer you fake love. They offer you emotional love. They offer you hatred between one another free stuff, but they are not offering you love. So you need love. And that, and when things come along, people turn on you, people lie on you, they try to, whatever they do, it would not move you. You will see how to deal with it, but you will not be moved. Your house will not be moved. But if you have, don't have love, you could be shaken up and blown away just like that. You could be blown away if you don't have love. And I'm going to get to some more of that in a minute. Yes, sir. I was told that I will not end the meeting at 1230 today. I'm going to make that person out of lie. We're going to end the meeting at 1230. Go ahead. Speaking on building your house on love, yeah. um, don't you say we don't have love to give? So how can we build our house on love? That's a good point. By realizing you don't have love to give and repent for hating, then God's love will come into you. Mm -hmm. And you'll be guided by that love. So building it on God's love, not our own love or whatever. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Because we don't have love. Human beings do not have love. Uh -huh. Either you have that phony love that comes from hatred, all the emotional crap, mm -hmm. or the real deal that comes from God. You can't feel it. You can't taste it. You can't touch it. Uh, but you live by it. Absolutely. Cool. Which one do you have? Uh, I mostly my reality has been the no emotional type of the love, like like you're describing, like the God's love. You say love. what now? I say uh, the my experience of life as of late has been the no emotional type of love, the uh, the just being kind of like how you recommend, and. Uh, God's love rather than my own. I well, suppose. be careful that Satan is not convincing you to have the no emotional love. Uh -huh. Because what I've noticed now, I understand why two people don't pray, is that Satan convinces you, well, I don't feel anything. Uh -huh. And you can control your own emotion pretending you're not feeling things. So make sure that's not happening. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Yeah, yeah. It's, you were talking about this uh, false false awareness that Satan gives yeah. you. Yeah. And uh, I think that's totally real, man. Like, yeah, yeah, it is real. Yeah, man. And, and because I could talk about God's love and Satan makes you think, oh, well, he said no emotion. So you have no emotions, right? Mm -hmm. And then he makes you feel you have no emotions. So a situation will come along and you just hold back your emotions about it. Eventually you will explode on some other situation because the emotions are still there it's just that he has convinced you to control him because Jesse said love is no emotion. Mm -hmm. Have anybody noticed that? Yeah. And mm -hmm. then down the road, something happened, you don't realize it, you're off the cuff. Because once emotions are gone in that way, they're gone, period. They don't come back. It's, something, it's not something you control, right. can control. Go ahead. I don't, there's, I don't really have any more to say. 
So about the emotion, is it real emotion or control emotion that you let go of? The controlling aspect of it, for sure, yeah. Well, then you still have it. Like trying to control, like my emotion, like what are you asking? You're asking... Do you try to control your emotions? No. Okay. They are just gone, period. Not all, not all, not all, but most. <laughs> <laughs> so you still have it there. Well, yeah, I, I would say. Well, you know, you know that I'm an actor, and like that's your whole job is to be, you know, have these emotions and be. A, but that's like in the moment, you know, right. when you're doing. You just use that for the movie. Totally. Yeah. But by and large, in in life and the day to day, nah. There's really it's just being. This is so important too because. You, you either have it or you don't have it, right? Yeah. Because situations will come along that you're not even aware is on the way. And if you don't have that perfect love, you'll find yourself going off because people do some crazy stuff. And sometimes it should be surprising. But if you love them anyway, it won't bother you. You'll understand mm -hmm. where they're coming from. Watching that situation like you're watching a movie. Like, like that, that was really helpful for me, just like... You know, not getting all wrapped up in whatever's going on. If they're like coming at you or just just not having any opinions about it's it. It's like Satan telling them, you know what? George doesn't have any emotion. I need you to check up on him. <laughs> and they're, they're going to get on you about the crazy. You were not even thinking of certain things. And somebody will come up with something that's absolutely crazy. And then try to make you think that it's real. I'm like, no, it's not real. I'm not thinking that. It's crazy. But if you have perfect love, you understand it. It has to be yeah. real. Right. And, and, and like, it can't be 99.9%. .9%. It's got to be 100. It's like got to be saying. 100. Yeah. Because the thing I've noticed about God, when he takes it away from you, all of it is gone. He doesn't take a little bit. You're not getting better along the way. If you're getting better along the way, you are in control. And your dad is Satan. God's not going to let you get better along the way. When he brings you out of hell, you're out of hell. It's not like, well, I'm almost out. I felt better today. I didn't overreact to this situation or that situation. It's like when, you, when, when, you, when he brings you back into the light, you're in the light. You're not halfway in the light and halfway out. It's not a process. I hear a lot of people saying, it's a, pro well, it's a process. No, it's not. No process. I don't even know if God heard that word before. It's not a process. You're either free or you're enslaved. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you doing a silent prayer every morning yeah. night? Okay. Stay with him, man. Thank you. Right here and then there. This young lady right here. Um, do you think frustration still comes from anger? Like if somebody Absolutely. gets... Absolutely. Okay. Without a doubt. So if I still get so frustrated? Frustration is the daughter of anger. Because when, when you get rid of anger, everything leaves. Frustration, sadness, depression, feeling sorry for folks and excuses. Whenever people start making excuses, just know they're angry. Okay. Um, lying and deceit, all that stuff disappears. Fear, doubt, suicidal thoughts, all children of Satan. Well, then I guess I'll be my, of anger. Okay, I guess my follow-up question would be then, like, I don't know, maybe if it is frustration that I have. Like, for example, if I'm at work and somebody calls out of work, one of my employees calls out, before I would get, like, kind of angry with them. Like, oh, I know you're not sick. Like, why would you call out at this important <laughs> shift? And I'd be angry at them. Right. But now when they do it, it's not that I get angry at them, but it's like, oh, like, shoot, that's inconvenient. Now I have to figure out. So I don't know if it's really frustration because I don't really get angry anymore. Like, I see it, I, but I don't get mad at them. But it's more of like, oh, like, now it's an inconvenience. I have to figure out. Well, you out. really need to watch yourself so you know that you know that you know that you know. And if you really want to know, God will allow you to see it. Okay. Because no one is with you. I'm not with you. Even if I'm with you, you might just be raising your voice and not be angry. Right. Or you might be saying, well, you need to come to work, you lazy butt. No, but yeah, not it's be not angry, even angry right? anymore. I don't so raise my only voice. you can know. Right. Okay. okay. Absolutely. Yes, sir. In the black sweater, yes. Hi, thank you. You said 30 years ago, God pulled you out of hell. Yes. 
What led up to that? I got tired of suffering because I was going to church. At that time, I was a member of uh, Crenshaw Christian Center, one of the largest churches here in L.A. And they had, you know, they had a good Bible teacher over there. Uh, you were singing and praying and doing all the right, all those things. I was working on the men publicity committee. I would, so I volunteered my time. I was given uh, donations. I was doing everything that in the physical that I was told to do, right? And it just wasn't working. And I just finally said, you know, I realized I can't do it. It's not working. I didn't pretend it was working. I knew it wasn't working. I wanted it to work. But I just got tired and fed up. So I just asked God to let me see myself. You know, I just said, you know, let me see, because I didn't know myself. I didn't really know what was going on. So I asked him, let me see myself. I just asked. And one morning, I was getting dressed. I forgot I asked. And I was getting dressed in front of the mirror, and I saw myself at a real fast glance. And I had this dark spirit inside of me. It was like that spirit that comes into your room when you eat too many candy yams late at night and go to bed. <laughs> and you can't sleep, right? You have this spirit that flies into your room. You ever had that happen? Anybody ever had that? It's like a dark spirit. It's flying in your room and then it's trying to get inside of you. It'd be trying to hold you down, right? And you try to get up, it won't let you up. And inside of me like that, I'm like, wow, I didn't know I had that in me. And, um, and then I, I, uh, he allowed me to see that it was because of the anger that I had. And one thing, he caused me to remember that if you forgive, I will forgive you. You're not supposed to go and ask for forgiveness. You go and forgive, and God will forgive you. And I did all those things. And I have read that in the Bible, too. And said the Lord prayer, uh, forgive me as I forgive others, right? So I went and forgave, and it's just never been the same anymore. Once I saw that, it was the anger. Everything changed. Thank you. And um, he took it away from me, and I haven't had, it's just gone. It hasn't come back, and I've dealt with more since that period than I had dealt with prior, and it's just amazing. Just, thank you. So you were seeking, and you just weren't satisfied. It wasn't right. Yeah, going right. to church and read the Bible, and but you're they going even through taught a me to pray in the to, tongue thing. You ever prayed in tongue thing? <laughs> they taught I, me that. They took me, you know, like at the end of the service, they tell you to come down and accept Jesus. And once you accept it, they're like, come on, go back in that back room with the usher. And they'll teach you how to do it. That didn't work. Nothing was working. It was only when I was able to see myself and I stopped and allowed God to show me. So tell me if this is incorrect. So you were going through a process of seeking, you were open to it. And then, just like that, it happened? Not process. Okay. I was just seeking. Okay. And then he allowed, and I started questioning things because I realized I didn't know myself, and he allowed me to see. And once he allowed you to see, that's it. All right. Thank you. Yeah, but not a, don't think process because God does not operate in process. He's here. He's now. Salvation is at hand. It's not down the road. It's not a process. Either you're free or you're enslaved. That makes sense? Yes, sir. Yeah. Give it to the young lady next to you. You kind of answered it um, when you said that fear is also the sister I used of to be, anger. I used to be lying at the church. And, <laughs> and the preacher would say, uh, they're reading the Bible. You're not supposed to have sex out of well. No adultery, no none of that, right? And I'm like, wow, I'm not going to have sex today. Before I could get home, <laughs> before I could get home, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm like, uh-uh, this ain't working. Some people deceive themselves that oh, it's working, but it's not working. When you face reality, you really can go free then. Don't pretend like it's working when it's really not. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you answered it by saying, I, when she asked you about um, frustration, so you said fear is also the sister of anger. It's a part of it, uh, right? uh, fear, fear is a child of anger. Okay. So because like I, I'm, I fear it like the devil. Like I'm like afraid to be like in my room with the uh, lights off. And so yeah. I, just, I just didn't know whether. He's talking to you. Okay. He really is. He's telling you, oh, you better turn the light on. 
You're afraid in the room by yourself. And the moment you believe it, he got you. It seemed real. Yeah. The it's, moment you believe it. But if you let that pass, okay. uh, knowing that it's not from you and it's not from God, you'll be fine. But even like doing this silent prayer scares me sometimes because it's like, I feel like I'm calling to, I don't know, it just seems like he's around or something. It's just let all that pass. And you might, you might be see, uh, sensing or the uh, darkness in your room. I, had, I know people who have done that. They have that anger inside. And so when they pray or when they go to bed, they can feel the spirit of anger. I mean, a wickedness in the room with them. But I tell them the only way you're feeling it because the anger is there. But if you forgive, stay with the prayer and forgive, eventually it'll leave. And those who have done that, it left and they never experience it anymore. I know you said right now that for you, when, once you've seen yourself and you've seen that you had anger, then from that moment it changed. Yes. So I feel like for me, I've, I've realized that I, do, I did have the anger, right? Maybe I still do, but... Do you have it now? You still have it? I, I, don't, I don't feel it, but do I Do mean, you have anger? I know you're not angry right there in the room, but do you still get angry? No, I... I but I, I haven't forgiven my dad as far as like physically, like that's the only thing. Do but you still get angry? I don't, not angry. Well, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> maybe Do you still best. get angry? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just like my wife. She would not tell the truth if I had one. Um, <laughs> Why don't you just say yes? What is what? Because you get frustrated, right? I mean, do you? Not to mislead you. Do you get frustrated at times? I don't even know. Like, I, I don't think Well, I get do. to know yourself. Pay attention to self. And you'll see whether you have it or not, or you get frustrated. So you can get frustrated and not know you're frustrated. I just deal with situations, and, like, I don't really, like, get angry or like, I, I mean, sometimes there's some c certain things that kind of get me like I'm confused about, but it's not like I'm angry. I'm just, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, get to know yourself. Okay. Don't make it a big deal. Just start watching yourself. You'll see. Ask God to let you see. You can also ask, let me see myself. He'll let you see. And it's mind blowing. And you're not going to like what you see, but don't deny it. All right, do not deny it. Just see it, don't hate it, and you'll be free from it. That makes sense? Yeah. And you have not forgiven your father, why not? Oh, because he lives in El Salvador. Oh, so, I see. Yeah, I, haven't I think he's coming over here, though, with that massive people. That <laughs> I hope he does. You can meet him at the border. <laughs> I thought about that. You think your father may be in that, in that group of people coming? I don't think so. I'm going to drive over there and ask, oh, any of you? The father too. Crazy. Would you, what would you do if your father's in that and he's standing at the border and like, daughter, daughter, let me in. Would you let him in? No. You would. <laughs> You'd be like, come on, daddy. You would not let your father in? No. That's but the wrong way. Do you, do you understand that whatever your father did or didn't do, he did his best? That's all he had? Yeah. You understand that? Yeah. Well, let it go then. Forgive him. And you're not able to see him right now. I'm just, just embarrassed to call him. It's, I don't know. It's weird. You what? I'm embarrassed to call him and Wh talk to him about this. Why? Because I feel like it's going to open up a can of worms or something. And say stopping you. It, he really is stopping. Call your father up. You don't have to bring up all the stuff that happened. Hey, Dad, I want to tell you that I'm sorry for hating you. I was wrong. I'm sorry for being angry. Anger and hatred is the same thing. Just call him and apologize. If you know you're wrong, it, it's wrong for what happened, but it's wrong for you to hold on to it. Your soul is suffering because it's disconnected from the tree of life. The, the body heals, but the, the soul doesn't until it's returned to God. Just call him up and apologize. Get it over. Okay. That, that makes sense? Yes. Yeah. You don't have to get into all, ah, you did me wrong. Yeah. <laughs> you took me over to J.C. Penney, and you saw another woman over there. <laughs> It's not even necessary. Okay. Just know that it's wrong to hate, and you can be free. Okay. That makes sense? It does. Give them a call and get, it, and get it over. Don't let Satan talk you out of it. Okay. Right in front of you right here. Yes, sir. 
Um, how can you watch your thoughts and not think your thoughts? I'm sorry? How do you watch your thoughts and not think your thoughts? That's a good question. How can you watch your thoughts and That's not think your thoughts? That's a good question. Who want to respond to that? Way in the back. Somebody knew that. Um, How can you watch your thoughts and not think them? Well, you have to uh, relax a lot, everything, like your jaw, I think someone said that, your shoulders, everything, um, and just kind of take a step back mentally and literally, like you say in the tape, just kind of let the role play, let the role go through and just observe. As long as you're not holding on to any thought and one thought goes in and another one comes in or one goes out, one comes in, then that's what you're doing. You're observing it. And sometimes you could be thinking about thinking that. But again, that's just another thought that goes through. It's like a, it's like a flowing river. You can't really hold on to anything. As soon as you put your hand in, another thought comes in. So that's when you realize you're just watching them. Yeah, just to add to that, because he's correct, you, when you're watching the thoughts, Satan can be busy to make you think the thoughts. But whatever's happening, relax anyway. You can't do anything about it, but watch it. And it's still not you, because Satan will give you an image, and then he'll tell you what the image is. You know, he's constantly telling you, and you'll come to the point where you know that you are not your thoughts. That they are not of you, they are not from God. But don't fight against it, just relax. So if you are watching him and he's like, the sun is going down. You see the sun going down, right? The sun is coming up. And you're thinking, the sun coming up. Just watch all that happening. And don't get frustrated. Don't worry about it. Just watch it. Because it's God who allows you to see it. And if he allows you to see it, you're free from it. Uh, that makes sense? Um, yes, a little bit, but it's, it's very difficult. Uh, also, I remember you saying um, to doubt every thought. Yes. And I'm, I'm wondering how do I doubt a thought without thinking the doubt? How do I, th if I think a thought <laughs> and then I think, oh, I doubt that, that's also a thought? Right. So I have to doubt that. That's a good point. Another good one, man. Um, when I say doubt it, what I'm saying is just watch it. Don't say, oh, I doubt you, Satan. Oh, I doubt if the sun is coming up. Don't say it. Just watch it. And watching it is doubting it. It's not believing in it. Don't have faith in it. Okay, so the part that I'm having trouble with, I think, is taking a step back. Because that's a literal thing to do. I don't know how to do that in my head. Yeah. Yeah, so when they come, when you, when you, however you're doing it, right? And those thoughts are coming, just watch them. Don't say, oh, I doubt that one, I doubt that one. I don't. You don't have to have a conversation about it. Just not holding on to it is enough. That makes sense? How long did it take you to be able to do that from when you started um, the silent prayer? Um, years. Okay. <laughs> I suffered through it. I had to learn the hard way. You know, I would, but the beauty is once I was brought out of them, and whenever I would go into one, I knew I was in a thought. I didn't know that before waking up, right? And so I knew the reason I felt a certain way because I believed into it. That's the beauty of it. And so I was able to relax, but I stayed with the prayer, and now it's becoming less and less and less and less. Well, part of me knows that I'm thinking a thought, but it's also very hard to, to just watch it. It's just, not if you don't put any effort into it. Don't put effort. Just watch. You know how you're watching that pretty young lady going down the street, right? And you can't get her, but you're watching her. <laughs> you don't put any effort in trying to get her, right? You just watch her until she get out of sight. You know what I mean? Sure. I thought so. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> Thanks, Jess. Okay, buddy. And the hat, the white cap. Yes, sir. Yeah. You taking mine? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Um... Yes, Ed. So to answer the last question, um, watching the thoughts doesn't always work for me, watching them. Why but, not? But, I don't know, but realizing, in my case, I realize the power that, that my imagination has. And as I'm sitting there, I see things get, things get brought to you by your imagination. You start seeing how strong that is. And you go, oh, there you go again. 
that's how it works for me. And one and, thing I want to clear up: the imagination has no power. Well, but what? It's if, because if, it's if, of Satan, right? And Satan want to pretend he right, has power. Exactly. But he really doesn't. Right. And so, but what he'll get you to believe in a lie and cause you to feel it. Once you feel it, you find yourself doing it. If and, you haven't grown yet. Yeah. Once you believe in it, all yeah, of a sudden you it takes you right it. down, right down the path. Yeah. And, you make and, you jump off the bridge. Yeah. Absolutely. But it has no power. It's a lie. It's an imitation of truth. I heard somebody once say the example is you start thinking about washing a car. Pretty much in 15 minutes of meditating, meditating, you've washed the whole car. Yeah. And and you haven't done anything. Yeah. But in your mind, you've washed your car. It's kind of a it's a strange thing, and you realize that your mind is doing that to you. Is what happens. Uh, and by the way, that works for good and bad. When you feel you feel really good, your imagination brings you something that's very pleasurable. Yeah. Or your imagination brings you something that's very painful. That's why both you both are powerful if you let them take you there. That's right. That's why you bring every thought into captivity. So it fits very well with your notion that we've talked about uh, in business, doing what's in front of you. Yeah. Instead of doing what you think is some grand idea right. or worried about. You don't need a 10-year plan or a 5-year plan. You just do what's in front of you. You see the next thing to plan. do and the next thing to do and the next thing. That's what is amazing. your vision? What is your mission statement? Right. Just do what's in front of you. And then that will make it itself very aware. You'll become very aware. You'll realize what you need without having all your imagination of maybe it won't work, maybe it will work, maybe this, maybe. Yeah. Just do it. And that happens naturally as part of the process. So you'll see it happen. Yeah, you, your mind will be renewed. It's, it's going to be amazing, man. Stay with the prayer, though. you got to stay with the prayer. The one thing I want to say, Oprah has, this, Oprah has this new book out called Finding Your Purpose. Don't, you can't find your purpose. Don't look. All right? Don't look. That's a lie. You'll be looking. And if you don't find what makes you happy, you think, oh, I didn't find my purpose, right? God would... It will come to you. It will find you. Don't look for it. It's a spiritual thing. Don't look for no purpose. How many people are already looking for your purpose? God is, well, wow. I got to get to the young lady in the glasses. You looking for your purpose? Where are you looking? Um, Google. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. And did you find it yet? No, I haven't found it. Yeah, stop looking. <laughs> yeah, it's because I've been kind of, I was doing really well my, on the silent prayer, and then I was like, oh, like, I'm fine, and then I stopped doing it. See but, that? Yeah, and now it, I suffered, and now I'm like, have to start all over. But I know a lot of people are saying that it takes too long. Now I'm just, even if I could do it for five minutes, I do it for five minutes. That's right. And I'm just, you know, it works for me. And then also the, like, going to your thoughts is uh, I kind of just realize, like, that I don't, make I don't create thoughts and then I'm just like damn it you got me again you know so that's, that's right. kind of like how I've been doing it lately is I've kind of been in my thoughts and I'm thinking that like I'm I'm creating my thoughts trying to find my purpose I'm trying to think like oh what do I what do I want to do or whatever and I'm just like oh wait that's like not me you know that's right, right on and you don't have to start all over because you there's no such thing as start out over start right where you are so you haven't let's say you missed a week you realize, well, I need to get back. I need to do my prayer. Just start doing it and stay with it. You can't make up for something that don't, don't exist, right? All over doesn't exist anymore. It's done. So start where you are, are here and now. Don't let Satan tell you you need to start over. As soon as you realize you're wrong, God is satisfied with you. Just start now. Oh, I haven't been doing my prayer. She's right, Brendan. You don't have to do it long. Five minutes is better than no minutes. You know what I'm saying? It just has, even if I was still offering the 30 minutes, which he said, you don't have to do it. Five minutes, 10 minutes, three minutes to start. You just need that quiet time for a minute. I'm just to be clear, it wasn't that I was saying that it was going to take too long to do the prayer. It was that it took too long for me to understand what you were trying to tell me to do. Yeah, I thought I'm black. What? <laughs> I'm black. He black. It's like I kind of just needed a quick overview. You're going to sit down. You're going to do this. You're going to think that. You're going to do this. Well, that's it. No, it was like you you don't really give an overview. You just start in, and it's like this Why White people always want an overview, huh? <laughs> White people are so educated. What's the overview? <laughs> no, I'm messing with you. Uh, 
So I will try again. Yeah. I, I, I wrote it in my calendar, and I'm going to. Look at white people writing it down. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote it in my calendar, and I got to do the overview. Yeah, just keep it simple. Okay. <laughs> All right, but um, I want to say this. What do I want to say? Oh, I got to ask this. And I'm looking at the clock, and I'm trying to show this other person. I'm going to end at 1230. Uh, Brenda, do you love all people? That means no. <laughs> you got to think about it. OK. No. No. How about you, Aunt? No. No. Uh, right here. The young, oh, young millennial. Do you love all people? No. Are you a Christian? No. Oh, well, that's right, Satan. You don't love all people. <laughs> uh, uh, Daniel, you love all people? I think I do. You, you love all people? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you love all people? Yeah. Well, you told me this morning you don't love black people. <laughs> I asked Daniel this question this morning. Well, I, at first he was saying yes, yes. I said, you love all people? Well, I think I love the whites and the Mexicans. I don't think I love black people. <laughs> I couldn't wait to ask you it out here. That's not true. This is my producer. <laughs> you, love, you love black people? I love, I love black people, yeah. You love all people? All people, yeah. Okay. Uh, Christine, you had your hand, right, just now? Oh. Yes, I did, Jesse. Do you love Thank all you. people? I don't love child molesters or um, serial rapists. Do you love murders. all people? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> you had a question for me. You had your hand. Uh, no, just with regard with um, in regard with uh, what this man was saying. Um, so I feel like with many other people, not just myself, like my faith and my relationship with God, it doesn't always feel static. But I feel like I'm growing in my discernment. So when I have those thoughts in my mind where I'm doubting myself that I can't do something, sometimes when I just tell myself what's right just to go with it, I pile drive through it. Like last night, I almost didn't come here today because I ate a ridiculous amount of pizza at an Italian restaurant. And I was like, oh my god, I like, I'm going to come in looking so bloated. You know, like my dress or my <laughs> yeah, skirt, it's not going to look why nice. why you got so fat overnight. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, no. I, I tried to hide it. Um, but and it's something as silly as that, you know, when you bring up uh, you know, like going to the restroom and then like, you know, Satan speaking to you. It's like, I almost didn't come because of um, Italian food. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, it is. That's why you have to doubt every thought. Every thought. But I'm, I'm going to work on that silent prayer. But in the meantime, I, I think I would like to buy a suffer and die shirt. Yeah, get a suffer yeah. and die. Just get, get your name out there. you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank um, you. Do you love all people? Yeah. You love all people? Yes. How about you behind her? I didn't love myself. I'm sorry? Not myself. You don't love yourself? Not Why not? Don't know. Why not? You say you don't know? No, I don't know. You don't know why you hate yourself? No. Oh. When, I have, when I watch my thoughts, I have bad thoughts. And so, but you hate yourself. When did you start hating yourself? Not sure. As long as, you, as, long as you've been alive, you've hated yourself? Hmm. Maybe as far back as I can remember. What do you hate about yourself? I'm not sure. <laughs> I just you don't no even idea. know why you no, hate yourself. No. Beta! <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll come back to it. The young lady behind you, do you love all people? I do. You do. Esteban, um, everybody listens for this one. <laughs> you love all people? No, I don't. All right. The white cap, you love all people? No. Amazing. Kelly, you love all people? Waiting for the mic. Yeah, I know. Yeah. She's waiting for the mic. I do. You love all people? Yes. How about you, Raymond? No. <laughs> uh, right here. You love all people? I don't know. You love all people? I don't know. Do you love all people? I don't know. Do you love all people? Yes. Uh, Ermis, you love all people? No. Oh, wait for the mic. 
<laughs> he said a real loud no. We don't need a mic for that one, huh? This one. No. Amazing. <laughs> Are you a Christian, Hermes? Yes. How can you be a Christian and don't love all people? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> well, why do you think you're a Christian if you don't love all people? Because I believe in God. How can you believe in God and don't love all people? Have you ever seen God? No. Well, how do you believe in someone that you've never seen, but you hate the people you see? That's a trick question. Like, a trick question? Yeah. <laughs> and the answer is? Well, I mean, I don't love. I don't think I love all people. But you, love, you believe in God. Mm -hmm. Why do you think you believe in God? Um, no, I don't think. I know I believe in God. And how you know you believe in God and you don't love all people? Because I've seen God work through, help me with different situations in my life and work through things. And that was in Michigan? Hmm? That was out here in L.A. or no, Michigan? No, throughout my life. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You thought God was helping you? I know he was helping me. But you think he will help you knowing that you don't love all people? I don't know all that. But I know that he's with me and when I need him. Uh -huh. And I know he's helped me through And you know you believe in him. I know that for a fact, yeah. Amazing. Mark, you love all people? Yes, sir. Uh, right here. This is your first time here? No, I came to your thing on Thursday. Uh, oh. Month. That was my first time. Okay, you love all people? It's not easy, but I do. It's not easy, but you do? Are you a Christian? Yes. Why isn't it easy? Because there's... Um, like with the young lady sit over there, it's like when you hear about child molesters and serial killers and all that stuff, you want to you want to allow that hate to go through you and direct it towards them. But it, I feel like um, if you allow that to happen, as justifiable as that might be, that does something to you that I don't think is good. Did God tell you to hate the molester? He told you to hate the molesting. Right, but did he tell you to hate the molester? No. So why do you hate them? I don't. You love them? It's not easy, but I have to. What do you mean it's not easy? Because I don't want to say it's cause on the surface, that could easily get taken out of context. And I trust people here know what I'm saying when I say that. Um, so you won't say it out loud because you won't say I love the molesty? Correct. Because you're afraid what they would think? Yeah, I mean, even just hearing myself say it, it makes me uncomfortable. Really? Yeah. Why? Just because... Oh, I know why. Because you're concerned what the world thinks. You can say that, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Let me just say in closing that uh, um, you want your house built on the love of God. And when you house, your house is built on the love of God, it's a solid foundation. And when situations come, when the storm comes, you will not have fear. And Rita, what made me think about this today to ask, do you love all people? I saw this uh, uh, documentary last night about Charles Manson. You remember him? Yeah. Who don't know about Charles Manson? He was a, uh, a murderer. He was like a, a serial killer, cult leader kind of thing. And he had a bunch of people following him. And he convinced, according to the report, he convinced some of these people to kill other people. And they killed a woman who was an actress at the time, Sharon Tate. And they killed other people, right? So he was like clearly of his father, the devil. He even had the sign of the devil in his head. This happened. When did this happen? 69. 69. And so uh, last night they showed this documentary of his grandson burying him. Who saw that? You see, you saw that? I saw the secret. Oh, no, well, they had the funeral, Charles Manson, the funeral, right? And he has a grandson. Um, he had a son, too, and the son was named Charles Manson Jr. And Charles Manson Jr. had a son who was still living. The, this uh, Charles Manson Jr. committed suicide because it was known that the other Charles Manson was his father, so he took his own life, blew his head off or something. But the grandson is still alive. His son is still living. And his son had a funeral for him. And uh, the point that came out of the whole thing is that he loved his grandfather. He didn't want it to be known that uh, he was his grandson because of what you were saying, what the world would think, right? But he went on and did the funeral anyway, and they taped it and they showed it because he realized that 
he didn't agree with what the man was about at all. And he, uh, at one time, was concerned about what the world thought about him being connected to the grandfather, but it's not him. But he realized he had to love his grandfather because he had this yearning for his real father and for his grandfather. So his grandfather kind of took the place of that. And my whole thing is, there's not one person on earth that any of you have the right to not love. And there's no way that you can love God or believe in God and hate your fellow man. It's a lie that you believe in God. Satan is telling you you believe in God, but you don't. Because how can you love a God of whom you never see and hate your fellow man? And then another thing, too, if you believe in God, your whole nature is that of love. And it's not something you feel, you taste, you touch, but you live by it. And you can disagree, you can yell at the person, but you cannot hate the person. It's impossible to hate because now you have been born again of perfect love. So, and I say that because say would deceive you to believe that you believe in God. Isn't that amazing? And one sign to know that you don't is that you don't love all people. You love, and if you, if you don't love God, I mean, if you don't love your neighbor, you don't even love your own children. You don't love anybody. You may feel that emotional love and call that love, but that's not love. That's why your kids get away with stuff, because it's not real love. If you don't love your enemy, you love no one. You can bank on that. You can also bank on when you overcome that anger, which is resentment, judgment, hatred, it's all the same spirit. When God take that away from, from you, he loves you, so you love everybody. You can't help it. You have no other choice. So I want you to really think about that so you can build your foundation on the love of God. Seek first the kingdom of God in his right way, and it'll be added. You'll just change. As Ed said, your mind will be renewed. You will have perfect love. It's so amazing. And so I want you to I recommend you get to know yourself. And, uh, and you'll see what's wrong. Don't judge what you see about yourself. Don't deny it. Just watch it, and it'll change. Uh, the young man right in the middle, do you love all people? Uh, no, I don't. You don't? And why not? Uh, I guess because um, I'm still going through the process of lo lo loving God. You're going through the process? What process are you going through? Uh, I don't know. I guess I got to love myself first, you know? And no, build, you can't love yourself build my either. Families. What's that? There's no such thing as loving yourself. Okay. So you're a lucky man. You don't love yourself. <laughs> There's no such thing as loving yourself. You just should not hate yourself. Don't hate when you don't hate. When you don't have anger, you love. And not the phony don't have. You have to, it has to be real. God has taken away. Do you... Do you who you, why don't you love yourself? Because uh, there's certain things about myself that I need to work on. Um, man, I would give you three minutes to tell me, and then I'm going to end. <laughs> what well, things that you're working on, as long as it's not perverse? Uh, temperance. Uh, I think that's the biggest issue with me. Yeah. Uh, you mean you go off and stuff? No, 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 no not, not at all. Just uh, my desires, like I'm easily, I'm trying to figure out how c I could deflect and uh, deflect my desires. And uh, yeah. You know that that's the nature of a woman, right? <laughs> woman, <laughs> beta. You know you're yeah. female, right? You're totally right. <laughs> yeah, you're a woman. <laughs> I am woman, hear me roll. <laughs> so forgive your mother, you'll be fine. Can you do that? I can do that. Yeah, forgive her, she can help herself. And, and return to your father, uh, and you'll be fine. This your first time here? It is. Oh, what's your name? David. David, welcome. How did you find out about us? Uh, no, my friend in the back. Oh, he did? Yeah. Oh, man, you have nice friends. <laughs> have they told you that you're a woman? Uh, <laughs> I love telling guys you're a woman. I'll be honest, he has. <laughs> to a certain extent. <laughs> and what did you think when they said, you know what, you're a woman? Uh... I didn't, I, was, I didn't take offense to it, because yeah. to a certain extent, 
it's kind of is right. That's yeah, right. that's right. Yeah. Forgive your mother and God will take it away and you'll be free. Right. Don't ask for forgiveness, but forgive her. She, go and forgive her and God will forgive you. All right. Any questions for me or anything? Uh, how did you manage to deflect those desires? I got tired of being a woman. <laughs> I got fed up with trying to change myself. I couldn't do it. So I'm like, look, I'm fed up. I can't change myself. I, need, I want to see myself. He allowed me to see, and that's when I saw what was going on. I went and forgave, and I was free. Matter of fact, when you really see what's going on, and you're sorry about the way you are, it'll change right then, really. And then you go and forgive, it's just icing on the cake. You love your father? Uh, he, I, haven't, I haven't talked to him in a very long time. So that means no, because you don't love yourself, no way you love your father. Well, forgive your parents, man, so you can be free. All right. All right? I'm glad you came. So, see, I'm ending five minutes late. But I got to end it. Um, here's what I recommend. And the reason I'm recommending this is because you're going to run into some bad situations out there. You're going to run into some bad people. You're going to run into some deceiving people. You're going to run into people that you care about who would turn on you. Because an angry person would turn just like that. I don't care if it's husband, wife, wife, husband, children, grandparents, friends, nephews, cousins, or whatever. They will turn. Anyone who has anger will turn on you. But if you, your house is in solid ground, you love God, you're going you're gonna to speak up, but you'll love that person. You just won't hate them. Because you'll see that they can't help themselves. You don't have to hang around them but you will not hate them. And Christ came so we can have a life like that on this earth. Have these, watch these challenges, but don't hate them. All right? So, I urge you to do the prayer. Stay with it no matter what. Stay with the prayer, and you'll be fine. Watch yourself, speak up, but don't resent and you'll be fine. But you got to stay with it. I, I stay with it. I've all, I talk about this every day, all day, all the time. But I still have to pray. I still have to watch myself. I have to be honest. I have to speak up. I have to know myself. I have to do that. And I urge you to do it too, all right? And you'll be fine. But just if you have a step backwards, don't judge yourself. No big deal. And everybody in that fallen state, all of us have been in some bad situations. All right? But the moment you realize that they're wrong, that, oh, I'm stupid, this is crazy, in that moment, it changes. And it's over with. Satan will try to remind you of it, but it's over with. All you have is this moment. Whatever happened yesterday doesn't exist today, except in your mind. So let it go. All right? Um, no meetings this week. We have the radio show every morning, but no meetings. Uh, don't forget to, we have books and t-shirts and things. We really need your financial support because we're looking for a building. We got to move out of here. They're going to tear it down and turn it into apartment buildings. And so every penny counts. And just imagine if all of you sent in $10 or 12, it will add up, all right? We can soon find a building. Um, so help us donate to the nonprofit, to the church as well. Don't forget to do the prayer. We have the best counseling service on this side of heaven. And same thing applies to all of you here. We need your support, so be sure to help us. Um, I think that's it, right, Hermes? Uh, Sunday, church. What? Church. Sunday, church. What? Church. Come here, real fast. This is my PR guy. Yeah. Thursday, uh, Thursday you're going to be out. He God, but don't hate, but he said, don't. <laughs> you said no women's forum? He believed in God, but hate everybody. No. <laughs> not true. <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> not uh, everybody. You said no, no women's forum Thursday? Right. Okay. What uh, I'm also, Sunday we're having a, uh, oh. it's Easter this Sunday. So we're having a potluck, whatever, after lunch, after uh, church. If you want to contribute or you want to bring something, please see Kelly. I think she's here. Yeah. See Kelly, Kelly the she's, uh, yeah, she's helping organize it. So. Potluck Sunday, all right? So bring a pot. <laughs> or donate and we can buy it. Oh, donate and we can buy it. Uh, I think that's it, right? Hermes, Joel? Oh, Joel has an announcement. Come here real fast. Take the mic. Uh, uh, What's wrong with you? He black. <laughs> <laughs> you black. 
You have an announcement. Yeah, I teach in Los Angeles now. So if you guys he want teach some lessons, dancing folks for those yeah. who don't know. If you want some lessons, or you can take my card there, or just talk to me on the side. But I'm in LA. Alex took the first lesson yesterday. <laughs> so Joel has a studio, dance studio in another city. Where is the other one? Duarte. 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 <laughs> Duarte. <laughs> <laughs> this is the art casting person. <laughs> And so he, there's so many uh, folks living in L.A. that you know that want to learn to dance. Uh, he started opening a studio in L.A., so it's real convenient for everybody. Uh, and the one thing I like about it, if you, you can lose weight if you're fat, you learn how to dance, so we can go to the parties and things like that. It's so much fun. Uh, so, and you learn how to dance. Right. And so, <laughs> and it's for it's old amazing. people and young. It's all races of people, all ages, right? Yes. All uh, right. He black. <laughs> he has some t-shirts that says he black. On the way, they on the way. Oh, OK. All right. <laughs> all right, thank you all for tuning in. I absolutely appreciate it. Thank you all for coming. I absolutely appreciate it.